Now what if after computing pre-mesh we need to change size of existing O-grid? This can happen due to any reason primarily bad mesh quality. In such case should we restart with initial block? The answer is an obvious no. In these kind of situation ICM has provision to resize O-grid. What it does is scale all radial edges of O-grid. O-grid can be resized either after or during creation of blocks. This is available in edit block tab in blocking functional tab as highlighted in figure. The edit block will further expand to different editing options. We can also resize O-grid by modify O-grid option as highlighted in figure. Here also we have provision of absolute distance. If absolute distance is disabled it will take relative distance of selected edge. A selected edge is given a factor of 1. A factor less than 1 will shrink the edge and thus create a larger inner block as shown in figure A. Similarly a factor greater than 1 will expand edge and will create smaller inner block as shown in figure B. Now let us move on to some operations in blocking. In previous slide we learned how to edit O-grid split. But if we want to remove any existing split then what should we do? In such case we have to merge adjacent block of split. Merge vertices option which is shown in figure allows you to merge vertices of block. Two vertices can be merged in different ways. By enabling propagate merge option which propagates merged vertices throughout affected blocks. Second by enabling merge to average option which merges vertices at average distance of two vertices. If we enable rebuild orphan option it will delete v orphan part and rebuild it. This may be necessary in some cases to clean up v orphan block. Among all these propagate merge option is frequently used. Remember that first selected vertex will be fixed and the other will propagate towards the first one to merge. If we want to delete an O-grid we only have to select vertices of one radial edge. The O-grid will be removed. We can see this operation as illustrated in figure shown. We have to remember the order of vertex selection. Till now we have talked a lot about O-grid. Now let us quickly see why we use O-grid. O-grid helps us in a lot of aspects. Number 1 to capture exact shape of geometry. Secondly to improve element quality in block corners where surfaces do not make a corner. Third to improve efficiency of node clustering near wall so as to capture boundary layer effects. We can see here a sample geometry which consists of hemisphere is shown in figure. The O-grid has helped in capturing curvature properly along with good element at corner. A mesh cut section is shown to illustrate this particular aspect. Let us now go back to different operations in blocking. The next operation is extend split. This option is highlighted in figure. It allows us to extend split to desired blocks. For this we have to select split edge which need to be extended. We have control over blocks through which split needs to be extended with the help of index control and also using selected option. As shown in figure selected edge extends in all directions. The project vertices option enables automatic projection of new vertices to underlying geometry. Next operation is split face of block. This split face option allows us to split a face at desired location. Do remember that it only splits face of block and not the block. As shown here first we select the face then the edge. The face is split normal to this edge. Next operation is merge blocks. This option allows us to merge several blocks into a single large block.
we can either select desired blocks or all blocks by using automatic option. Do remember that we cannot merge block of different parts unless we first change them to same part. The entire operation illustrated here. We select these two blocks and they are merged into a single block. This is a fairly simple operation. Now let's move to next method of editing block. This is the merge face option. Here we need to specify diagonally opposite corners across faces of blocks to be merged. This operation merges blocks on both sides of selected faces although we cannot select across O-grid because O-grid has different index control. In order to understand any effect of blocking operation, it is generally useful to check index control before and after an operation. Now we will see periodic vertices option. In many simulation problem, we need to use periodic boundary condition. For doing this, we need to specify periodic at pre-level. In order to define boundary as periodic, we need to have pair of periodic vertices. The periodic vertices option within edit block allows us to make selected pair of vertices into periodic nodes. While doing this, order of selection is very important because second vertex of each pair will move to periodic position of first vertex. When you move one vertex, its pair will move with it. Even subsequent splits will also be periodic. To cross check whether the periodic pair selection is correct or not, we can either enable periodic vertices by right clicking on vertices or enable periodic faces by right clicking on faces. One important thing to note is that a face becomes periodic only if its four corner vertices are periodic. Our next logical step in learning blocking operation is to explore how blocking associations are done. We can do this by various ways. First associate vertex, associate edge to curve, associate edge to surface, associate face to surface, dissociate from geometry, Update association, reset association, project vertices, group curves. We will see these in detail in the coming slides. First, let us see vertex association, which is given by this particular icon. This option allows us to associate vertices of geometry. We can associate vertices to either a point or curve or surface. If a vertex is associated to point, then vertex is fixed. If associated to curve, then it can move along associated curve only and similarly for surfaces. Next is edge association. The edge association option allows us to associate edges of blocks to curves. The vertices at end of edges are also associated to same curve unless they were previously associated to another curve or point. Edge segments can be individually associated after using edge split. Multiple edges can be associated with multiple curves but all curves will be grouped into single composite curve. The project vertices option automatically project vertices to curve. The project to surface intersection option is used for pure geometry situation where intersection curve may not match intersection of surfaces. This option will make sure that nodes are kept at surface intersection. The last one which is project ends to curve intersection option forces vertices to end points of curve.
Next is associate edge to surface. This option allows us to associate edges to surface. It associates edges to closest surface. After association, color of edge will change to white or that of foreground. Another association method is associate face to surface. This allows us to associate face surface. There are different options available in ICM by which we can associate faces to surface as per requirement. First, the closest option follows the closest surface for projection. It can also be used to force internal faces to follow a surface. Next, the interpolate option interpolates shape of meshed face from shape of bounding edges. It is mostly used when any face crosses a missing or poor quality surface. Last one that is part option projects face to surface that is in specified part. This is useful for closely spaced curved surfaces such as turbine blades. Now the next is shared wall option. This option allows us to set general projection rule regarding faces between two specific volume parts. There are different ways to specify face as shared wall. First, by enabling the create option, we can create a new surface part to which this shared wall will be assigned. By enabling remove shared wall option, it removes shared wall as defined between two volume parts. By enabling none option, it removes default behavior so that edges or faces between specified volumes do not automatically associate with surfaces. It is useful if volumes are created just for display or selection purposes. Next in associate is link shapes option which allows internal faces to have same shape as linked boundary face. These faces can be unlinked by dissociating them. For this, we need to select boundary face and associated internal face. This difference can be clearly seen in the two figures. In both figures, the scan plane is shown. Figure on the left shows mesh when internal faces are not linked, resulting in cell jump. But for same geometry, when internal faces are linked to boundary face, it takes same shape resulting in smooth transition in mesh. The next option is dissociate from geometry. This option allows us to dissociate any blocking entities. Selection of different entities to be dissociated can be done individually or together. We can remove any association or, or easily overwrite associations. The update association allows us to set association to nearest entities of already assigned type. You have provision of selecting blocking entity to update association such as either vertex, edge, face or all of them. Now here a question may arise that what is the need to update association? For this, let us say we have some configuration whose blocking we have already done along with proper association. Later, we made some changes in this configuration. In such a case, we will read same blocking and say update association. Thus, instead of redoing association, you only have to make some changes while everything else remains the same. This takes comparatively lesser time. A simple example of update association is shown in figure. We can see how original block is used on scaled up geometry as well as results after update association on new geometry with more or less same topology. The reset association option resets association of exterior blocking entities back to association with nearest surface. 
Next operation is snap project vertices. This option allows us to project all vertices that are associated to respective points, curves or surfaces. We can either select vertices or instead all visible to project vertices. The move ogrid nodes option moves internal nodes which are attached via an ogrid edge to external nodes. It's generally recommended to snap vertices once we are done with association which helps a lot while providing node clustering. The group ungroup curves option allows us to group curves into a composite curve or ungroup composite curves into separate curves. This is needed for associating an edge to a set of curves. These curves should first be grouped into composite curve and then edge can be associated to that composite curve. Composite curves can be displayed by right clicking on curves in display tree and selecting the option show composite. Next is auto associate. This option allows us to associate edges to curves. Auto attempts to link edge projections of blocking in relation to topology of geometry. Be cautious of using this for complicated geometry as sometimes it increases time for reassociation. Now we will proceed to vertex movement operations which help in improving mesh quality as well as helps us in properly capturing the geometry features. Let us start with first option that is move vertex as highlighted in figure. The move vertex option allows us to modify location of a vertex. For this we have to select a vertex using left mouse button, accept selection by pressing middle mouse button and use right mouse button to cancel selection. We also have to specify movement constraint of vertices to be moved. There are different constraints such as fix xyz allows us to fix xyz axis direction. Fixed direction allows us to move vertex in fixed direction which is defined by two vertices. Normal to surface allows us to move vertex normal to surface. Whether a vertex can be moved or not depends on its association. Let us say that if vertex needs to be moved on surface it should be white as per the color code. Similarly if it is to be moved on edge only green vertices can be moved. Under move vertices operation there is a set location option. By using this option we can move vertices by changing their location. We can do this by two methods. First by set position, second by set increment. Under set position we can modify coordinates of vertices. For this operation we select the reference point for vertices to be moved. This reference point can be a vertex or a screen point. Then we select unit distances in x, y or z direction. Finally we select vertices to be moved under the tab vertices to set and then press apply. So to summarize these vertices will be moved to a new location which is given by the unit distance we specify considering the point we specify as a reference. We also have an option to select either a Cartesian or a cylindrical coordinate system. In the second method which is set increment we move vertices by any incremental distance in x, y or z direction. Hence here we do not need a reference point. In this operation also we have option between Cartesian or cylindrical coordinate system. An example for set increment option is highlighted in this figure. We specify delta x, delta y and delta z increments and vertices will be moved accordingly from their current location. Thank you for viewing this particular session in our lecture series. If you have any queries, please post them on our e-learning portal.